Hi! Today we're gonna check what is Rider, how to use it and how you can get it for free and use it in your projects. In case you don't know, Rider is a software developed by JetBrains and JetBrains creates all sorts of IDEs. If you are developing a web application, you have WebStorm, if you are doing some kind of Python, you have PyCharm. But in case of the game development, Godot, Unity, you can use Rider. This is IDE, so a software that helps you write code for your game, the same as Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. And here you can see that, as I said, it supports all sorts of languages and all sorts of solutions. Actually, if you're doing any game development, you can use Rider for it. Rider has a ton of useful features, which we'll go through later on, but most importantly, it offers all sorts of code refactoring uh, tools and also a great plugin for Unity uh, which we can read about here uh, that has built-in support for uh, Unity native methods or even running Unity game by just pressing play in the editor and much much more. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second but first you've seen in the title of this video that the rider is now free uh, and this is sort of a truth. So a few weeks ago if you would go to the pricing page uh, you would see that Rider is actually a paid software, it costs uh, 150 per year, which is actually quite expensive compared to other uh, free alternatives. But just a week ago, uh, JetBrains announced that Rider is now free. But there is a catch, uh, it's only free for non-commercial use. So if you are just learning game development or you are uh, developing a hobby project, open source one, you can use Rider completely for free. But as soon as if you'd like to publish your game, uh, take some money from it, you need to pay. But the good thing is that Rider offers something which is called a perpetual fallback license, which means that after uh, one year, if you decide to stop paying, you will still be able to use the software, but you won't get any new updates unless uh, you will purchase the license again, uh, which will update you to the newest version, and then again you will have time to use the newest version for 12 months. Uh, so, okay, let's learn how to install it and connect it with your Unity project. Obviously, we need to start by just downloading this rider by clicking the download button. And in case of a Mac, uh, select your desired version. In my case, I have Intel uh, Mac, so yeah, I need to select that and download it. Once it's downloaded and installed, uh, you will see this screen. So obviously let's uh, read this agreement and accept it. Then there is data sharing. I believe that in this free version, this is a limitation that we actually need to data share, but I will try to click don't send. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then we have this new screen uh, with an option to start free non-commercial use. So I will click that. Uh, all we need to do is to accept terms and conditions uh, and then register a JetBrains account. Once I will log in the browser, I can go back to uh, ID and just click start non-commercial use. Okay, and this is my license. I can just click continue and start working. In this wizard, we have a few options to choose from. Uh, first, we can choose our theme, light, dark. I will go with, uh, let's say, Visual Studio theme. Then I would like to use Visual Studio uh, key mapping. Mm, I won't install any plugins. Uh, and yeah, we are ready to start. So now let's open our Unity project uh, and connect it to the rider. So this is my Unity project where I have this map interface. Uh, I've created all of that in my Master Unity UI course where you can learn how to create this and many more uh, Unity UI related projects. You can learn all sorts of skills here, uh, beginning from the simple text creation, shadow, layout styling, and finishing up by creating a more advanced drag and drop interfaces uh, and animations. If you'd like to learn UTY with me, check out the link below. 
So I would like to connect this Unity project with the Rider. Uh, first, we need to tell Unity that from now on we'd like to use Rider instead of our current IDE. To do that, uh, go to Unity, Settings, and here in External Tools, we have External Script Editor, and instead of Visual Studio Code in my case, select Rider. And actually, it's already done. I can just close, and now I will just click Assets, open C Sharp project. That opens a new window. Yeah, I trust this uh, project solution. And here is our Rider window. So I won't go in depth of all the Unity related features in this editor, but I will show you just a few ones uh, so that you can get started. Uh, first of all, just like in any other IDE, here on the left we have uh, our assets folder and here you can find all of your created scripts. When I open one of those scripts, let's say this tooltip instance script, that obviously opened our code editor. And I should say that Rider has some strong opinions on how you should write your code. Uh, obviously, these are the default settings and you can tweak them if you uh, don't like to follow the Rider guides. But let's quickly go over them and check what's happening here. So first we have a warning uh, that, yeah, we are using directive that is not being used, so we can remove that. Okay, what's happening here? Uh, here, Rider wants us to use private modifier, so let's do that. Uh, and probably in many more cases. So here, here, mm, here. Uh, what's happening here with this if? Here, Rider suggests a small refactoring of the code to invert if statement to reduce nesting. Uh, we can do that. Just click on this bulb and click invert if. Of course, this is a very short bit of code, uh, but with longer and more complicated code structures, it will be much more helpful. Apart from that, uh, you can see that here, above the awake method, which is a built-in Unity event function, we have this event function button. When we click on it, uh, we can actually very easily click view documentation, and that opens this window uh, with mono behavior awake information. Apart from viewing documentation, we can also use built-in Unity snippets. So, for example, I can just start typing uh, update, and that automatically creates uh, this uh, event function. Next up, above every function, we have this usage information. When I click on it, we can actually see uh, every script that is using this function. That is quite normal, pretty much every ID does that, but notice that actually above the uh, class, we also have an uh, asset usage, uh, which shows us each scenes use this uh, script. So for example, when I go to tooltip opener, I am aware that way more assets uh, is using this tooltip opener. I can click on assets usings and in this uh, window we have all the different assets on the scene that has the script attached. I can actually click on any of them and that opens it with the correct scene uh, and this usages window which we can drag here which is just a cheat sheet of all the components that are using it so we can find them in the scene and even uh, prefabs that is using the script. So here I have user point prefab for example uh, and that highlights this prefab in the assets. Coming back to some more snippets, uh, we can use some built-in snippets like, for example, S field that creates automatically this serialized uh, field of a type string name text. And again, next to each serialized field, we have this information changed into assets and we can find all the uh, property overrides in the scene mono behaviors. Another feature uh, is that we can use this play button to automatically start playing our game in Unity. So, for example, I will uh, create the sort of a split screen window here. And now you can see that when I uh, press play here in Rider, that automatically uh, recompiles the code just to make sure that everything is up to date and starts the game in Unity. 
In some cases, you even don't need to open Unity console because if you like to uh, trace your debug logs, you can click here, Unity, and you have Unity console right here in the editor. Actually, you can see that here I have something not implemented. Uh, I can just double click on it and that immediately shows me this part of code, which is uh, faulty. And last but not least, uh, Rider of course has amazing uh, debugging capabilities. We don't need to configure anything. All we need to do is to just click this green bug icon uh, up here and that automatically attaches a debugger to the Unity. And after a second of loading, we can now press play. We are again, not even leaving the uh, Rider editor and it immediately uh, highlighted this update function, which yes, it's not implemented. So I'll stop the bugging, remove it, uh, start once more. And now when I start the debugging session once more, you can see that we have a more serious issue here that the method is not implemented for some reason. We can highlight any of the variables to get their information like this is current position of this transform we can highlight transform itself to get some more in-depth information uh, and basically we can debug our code much faster so that's it for the rider uh, let me know down in comments which id you are currently using uh, and don't forget to check out master unity course on co-code learn as always thanks a lot to my awesome patrons see you all soon